Well, hopefully my wife will have something and she'll get up here too. Uh, it was supposed to be a duo thing. Our week has turned into chaos. We had a, a member of the family pass away, so she's been kind of with that. So I'm sorry, you stuck with mostly me this morning. Uh, it's kind of like finding out the Patriots in the Super Bowl again, isn't it? It's like, oh my goodness. Uh, you know, Cornerstone has been... <laughs> she never liked me anyway, so... Uh, Cornerstone has been near and dear to our heart and um, so many faces that we just absolutely love to see. Um, we were here from like 2001 to 2007, I think. That was before Randy Parks had facial hair. Um, that was before Jeff was old and some other things, you know, I won't mention. But um, uh, it is just good to, to be here and to be with you guys. And um, uh, I'm excited to be working and walking together in a closer way. I hope you've been hearing this, but over at English Lake, we've been talking about this at least, that we're going to start walking closer with Cornerstone. And uh, we're actually down in West Lafayette as well, so we're part of that and, and really do feel like God has always planned and purpose that in his heart for us as a bigger family. And uh, feel that there's something about we can go further, faster together, that we can be sharper reflections of the living King that we can see our communities even transform to a greater degree uh, through linking arms and being a body of Christ together. And, um, and so we're excited. We don't know exactly what that means, but um, hopefully we'll be seeing each other more at least. And I do believe that God's going to allow us to walk together in greater ways. And so uh, we're really, really, really excited for that on our end. And, uh, you know, you might feel like you, <laughs> you drew the short end of the straw with that. But anyway, uh, family's family and you're stuck with us. So uh, it's good. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Joshua chapter one today. You can pull up that PowerPoint. Uh, today, I want to talk about a little bit about inheritance. Uh, Josh and Amy are over sharing at English Lake. I wasn't supposed to talk today, but I figured if they're going over there, I'm getting out of there. Um, <laughs> Not really. Not really. They booted me out. Um, and uh, next week you're going to have Don and Gail. Some of the things we're talking about now, you know, we're, we're talking about this as we go. Um, but we get to be part of God's family, and God is on the move. Uh, he's not aloof. He's not far off, kind of just sitting back, waiting to see how things are going to turn out uh, and on the planet Earth. But he's actually doing something. He's working. Uh, he is actually at work all the time around us. And uh, if you don't think so, I want to challenge you just to, to step out into the mission of God and you'll see he is at work. Uh, as we've stepped out into West Lafayette, we've just seen miraculous moment after moment after moment of God. We're like, wow, he's even more at work than we ever pictured or imagined or knew. And, um, and I just want to encourage us that actually uh, God is on the move and he's doing much. He's not done yet. He's not done yet. He's got a lot of things on his heart that he's going to accomplish. Lots of family members who haven't known him as father yet that he's pulling back into his family. And uh, we get to be part of that as his family. And so as we go, Cornerstone, English Lake, West Lafayette family, uh, being part of this, all right, some of these dynamics that we're sharing are some of our DNA or these things that we want to be about together. And today I get to share about discipleship uh, as we go. And uh, I was started reading through the book of Joshua here not too long ago, and God spoke to me within the first couple chapters, and I just want to share a little bit of that this morning with you. And uh, in Joshua chapter 1, I told you to go there, right? Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 says this, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh, said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give you, or give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised to Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, and all the Hittite country to the great sea to the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
So God comes to Joshua and says, hey, you remember that promise that I made to a guy named Abraham and repeated it over and over to Abraham's descendants that you're going to take this land? Well, that's going to happen right now in your day through you. From Lebanon to the Mediterranean Sea to the Euphrates River, I'm giving that to you. You just have to get your feet and occupy this thing. Are you with me? Now, did they walk into that promised land? Lebanon, Mediterranean Sea, Euphrates River. Partially. Didn't they? Did they take all that land? No. God said, it's yours. All you do is have to go. And they went for a while. And they settled then. And they started to enjoy, as we know a little bit of the story, they started to enjoy the wonderful gift of family and fields and flocks. And they didn't grab a hold of the full inheritance that God had meant for them. And as I read that, I had one of these little God moments, and he says, how about you, Shane? Have you grabbed a hold of all that I have? Now, I know when God asked me those questions, that <laughs> the answer, because the reason he's asking me is there's something he still has for me. You ever been on the other end of God asking you one of those questions? Can I say, body of Christ, I think we have yet to grab a hold of everything that God has for us. I think there's so much more that he has for us. And he says, all you have to do is come and grab it. And we do for a while. And then we find ourselves losing focus, even with wonderful, good gifts that God has given us. Join the fields and the flocks and the family as we settle in, and we miss part of what God has for us. Today I want to talk about how that happens in regards to a bit of discipleship. I was thinking of it like this, all right? Um, I hesitate to pull my wallet out around Jeff overall. Um, but anyway, <laughs> usually lock it in the van when, uh, when we're here. Um, but, you know, if I were to kind of make this statement and say, hey, Randy, uh, I got, this money is yours. I had to, like, steal all my wife's money out of her wallet this morning to actually have some bills in here, all right? Uh, I got all this, and it's yours, Randy Parks. You just have to come and grab it. Now, this is an illustration, Randy, okay? You just have to come <laughs> and grab it. And say Randy were to come up and just start to look through the wallet, and he kind of starts to, to look in through there, and there's some bigger bills and smaller bills, and he just decides, you know, I'll just kind of take, you know, this one looks kind of good, and this one looks kind of good, but just kind of sets it back down. Be silly to do that, wouldn't it? Whose is it? I gave it to him. Take this blessing. I have it for you. I'll take little George Washington. Oh. Just to, thank you, Randy, for, you know, no. For just, listen, Ephesians 1, here, we're just, let's flip this here. Do I go down? Yep, Ephesians 1 says this. Paul says this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with what? Every, say every with me, every spiritual blessing in Christ. Every spiritual blessing in Christ. Do you believe that? See, what I think happens, I read this and I start to actually misread it and think, okay, thank you, Lord Jesus, who blessed us in the heavenly realms through Jesus that I have the forgiveness of sins and get to go to heaven one day. Oh, thank goodness. Great gift, the forgiveness of sins. Wonderful gift, isn't it? Especially when you've lived my life, right? Wonderful gift. Or if you mess up like Greg, it's a good gift, right? Are you with me? But listen, there's more that he has for us. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms ours in Christ Jesus. Does it say when we go to heaven? Paul's talking to a church 
very much on the ground in Ephesus and says, these blessings in Christ are yours. These blessings in Christ are yours. Are you with me? The wallet is yours, Randy Parks. It's yours for the taking, Joshua, children of Israel. Go, occupy, take all that I have for you. And we settle when we have the whole thing. Are you with me? Let me just talk about this in regards to discipleship today. And I want to ask this, if we knew this. Actually, I'm going to go just to this scripture. In Romans 8, 29, be in this, all right? For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. What did he predestine? What did he predestine? Us to be what? Conformed to the image of what? His son. Who's his son? So we get to be like who? This isn't a passage about some are chosen, some are not chosen. Paul's quite clear in his book that this is about both Jew and Gentile being part of God's chosen people, all right? But he says that not only are we chosen, but we're predestined. He's planned and purpose for us to look like his son. That's a blessing, right? We get to be like Jesus. We get to be like Jesus. And we say, I'll take salvation for 20, for 100. Alex, right? Streets of gold for 200. Thank you. And often we leave one of the greatest treasures. He's going to shape and mold us the way he did Adam out of the dirt in the garden into the image of his son. We get to be like him. That's our destiny. Not to just be sons and daughters, but to be sons and daughters that bear his image, right? This is what Genesis is all about. Not so that we know evolution isn't true. Yes, it all came from God, but he has a plan and purpose. Sons and daughters who bear his image, that do what he does, that order the garden, that steward things on his behalf, that continue co-creating with him for eternity. That's what we get to do, and that's who we get to be as sons and daughters. Like him. This has sent me on a little bit of a journey and said, you know, God, I want my inheritance. I don't want these promises from you that are just wonderful that I never grab a hold of. How about, yeah, God, I want to be like your son. I want to look like him. I want the fullness of that in this lifetime. I want to chase after that. I don't want to just be a good person. I want to walk in the fullness of being like him. Why would I settle? And my wife says, you shouldn't settle. You should look more like Jesus. <laughs> she tells me it every day. She loves that God's speaking to me about this right now. Are you with me, church? What an inheritance. Sons and daughters that bear his image. We get to be like him. So my son has, over the last year, started to really enjoy basketball. It's really, really good. I was going to make fun of Jason Berkey this morning. You know, he, he's starting to learn about the NBA players and, and great high school athletes of the 80s and 90s. Uh, doesn't know about obscure shots, you know, that high school players have made or anything like that. You guys can tell Jason I made fun of him, okay? Uh, but I've introduced him to Michael Jordan highlights. We get to watch these on YouTube. It's great. Manute Bull, he's at the bus stop in the morning talking about Manute Bull and Spud Webb and Muggsy Bogues, and the other kids are kind of like, what are you talking about? He was 5'7", and he could dunk the basketball. And, and you know, so I'm, I'm introducing him to the world of basketball. And he's really loved basketball. He's determined, even though he's not naturally very tall or athletic, that he might want to be in the NBA someday. And he probably thinks he will be in the NBA someday. <laughs> and uh, do you think I'm going to be in the NBA, Dad? Because I think I can be in the NBA. And I think I might have a better chance of being in the NBA than Kaylin, my twin. And um, just in case you're asking or wondering, and he tells all the bus kids, you know, I'm probably going to be in the NBA. But at the same time, we're having these struggles with basketball as well. 
So um, there's no, uh, in West Lafayette where we're at, the, the, the intermediate school that they're at, there's no school organized basketball, so you have to play through kind of like a courts type thing. And, um, and so it's really limited space, and, and he didn't make it to one of those. And they asked him, they said, if you could play down with the fourth graders, even though you're in fifth. And, and so that wasn't very attractive, especially when all his fifth grade friends said something to him about being the only fifth grade on the fourth grade team because they didn't have enough. And you know how that goes. And he was determined, even though I want to be in the NBA, I don't think I want to play basketball, right? And then he, and then he, then he plays basketball, and the coach is a, a father who – is not maybe the most gracious with young kids. Um, and so a bit rough around the edges to parents maybe sometimes as well. And uh, so my son thinks, you know, well, maybe I don't want to play basketball, especially when you got a coach like this and this is the issue. So I think I still want to be in the NBA, though. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how many times he's quit practice because he gets home and gets done with homework finally several hours in, and then, and then he has to go to practice. And he thinks, well, I just want to go play with my friends today, so I think I'm not going to play basketball anymore. Are you with me? I want to be in the NBA, but man, that seems like a lot of readjusting of life and kind of some difficult things to walk through in order to actually walk into the fullness of that. And there's a disconnect. Are you with me? Anybody ever experienced that disconnect in life? How about in regards to the fullness of I get to be made into the image of God. I get to be like him. We get to be like him. Boy, it's awfully hard forgiveness. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> if it wasn't anybody but Randy, I'd consider it. But you know, I mean, he's done it. So you know how many times Randy ate all my cookies? When he's back in the youth group, I mean, it was like carnage in the kitchen. No, you know, it's one too many times. Just not going to go there. But yeah, I'll take that gift of being, are you with me? So I want to just talk for a few moments of some of these wonderful gifts that we often just kind of shelve because the reality of walking into it and pursuing it, right, is different than the idea of it. Are you with me? The idea of being like Christ, yes. What's that mean over here? Okay? I'm just going to do this. I know you guys have probably heard. Ooh, that's not what I was going to do. Uh, there it is. All right. But am I being discipled into my destiny? Into my destiny of looking like him? In regards to my life with God, do you know that the same life and relationship that Jesus had with his heavenly father, you and I, get to have? He says, I want to walk with you in that way. We get to be like who? We get to have a relationship with the living God like who? Forget the NBA, right? Come on. We get to be like him. What do you think that would look like over here in the reality of walked out pursuing that? Definitely would be going to practice for my son to get to the NBA, right? That's square one. We got to at least go to practice, bud. At least make it to practice for the two hours a week that you have it, right? Can I ask, how about us? What does it look like to pursue a relationship with the living father that his son Jesus has? What does it look to rearrange our lives so that I can know him? like Jesus knows him. I meet with a group of uh, uh, ministry leaders on campus on Fridays, and they're just really fun young guys like me. Right? You know what I mean? Like, we're not really balding. You know, people think we might still be in college. We're really cool. <laughs> Sit at the local coffee shop, that type of thing. And people think college kid, really cool, grads, something like that, you know. Uh, but as I sat next to one of those guys, um, uh, you can just tell this guy's prayer life is absolutely deep. He's one of those guys that you just know he knows Jesus. And as we share and drink coffee and talk about how cool we still are, and, and uh, you can tell he knows God. 
that his prayer life is vibrant. I sit there and think, I want that. I want that. So I asked him, hey, I want what you got. Can you teach me how to pray like you? I don't want to imitate him. I want the depth. I want the depth of knowing God like that. I wake up in the morning, and I'm not just trying to stay awake and pray for my big list. I encounter the living God because God has made this promise that we can be like him, including knowing the Father in that deep way. I want to open the book of Joshua and other books every time and have God speak. Where it's not just I get some information, but oh, he's there, he's talking. He's saying, Shane, how about you? How are you grabbing a hold of what I have for you? Oh, to encounter the Lord like that. Are you with me? I want to be led by the Holy Spirit in everything I do. To really be able to say, I haven't done anything today that God wasn't leading me into. That'd be pretty cool. going to happen? Probably not, but but there's this promise from the living God that says, come and be conformed into the image of my son. And the testimony of his son, Jesus, was, I've only said what I've heard my father say, and I've only done what I've seen him do. Wow. What an inheritance. Are you with me? What a joy to be like God in that way. Am I speaking to the right people? We get to have a life with God. Can I ask you, how are you approaching that life with God? Is that one of the things that people ask? Tell me about your life. I just want to be like him. My Christian walk is about me becoming more and more of the person who God has planned and purpose for me to be since the foundations of the world. I want to be everything of who he's planned and purpose for me to be. And by God, I'm growing into that every single day. Do I take steps backwards? Absolutely. Do I give up on practice a little too easy sometimes? Oh, yeah. But I want the fullness of it, and I'm not going to stop until I have it. I want the fullness of the depth of relationship with the living God that he has planned a purpose for me, and I don't want to settle. Don't want to settle. It's not about going to church and learning some information. It's about becoming a son and daughter that knows him. That knows him. Can I ask if you open yourself up to people in a way that says, help me know him more this year. What's your strategic plan for 2019 to know God more? You got a strategic plan to lose about 15 to 20 pounds? Kind of uh, quick grain? So rapidly, some of those type of things. Trim my nose hairs a little more often so I don't look so old. How about our strategic plans to know God more? I'm going to rearrange my life a bit this year so I know him a bit more like God has planned and purposed. Can I tell you, that's a wonderful joy, an inheritance from the living God to us as his people. Let your feet stop where you're at and say, hmm. Let's not let the story of Joshua and Israel be our story. Are you with me? Let's walk into the fullness of it. How about in regards to our relationship with the body of Christ? Do you know that Jesus is the master builder of the church? Isn't that great? The church is in his hands. And he's doing a wonderful job, by the way. One-seventh of the world, now followers of Christ, committed followers of Christ, from about 2,000 years ago, just a little kind of small herd. I'd say he's done a pretty remarkable job. Now, even though the church is shrinking in our little neck of the woods, it's not happening in the rest of the world. He's done a quite remarkable job building his church, and he's going to continue to do that. We can rest in that. But do you know that we get to be part of it? We get to be part of building what he's building. So the other day, and you guys know, parents know how this goes, I'd had one of those weeks. We had really given ourselves to the neighborhood. We were, we threw a party. I went sledding with neighbors. I went and watched the great defeat of IU at the hands of a godly Purdue basketball, men's basketball team. 
great game. Ministry these days is so rewarding in so many ways. Yes, send me, Lord, send me. We had other neighbors over that were starting to cross over and being able to talk about intentionally learning about Christ uh, when they've never been in church their life and wanting to, to come to know him and are willing to do some of those things. And we had really given ourselves. And I finally told my wife, I said, I just want an hour and a half, like a movie, like uninterrupted. Ah, oh, that's if I can have that this evening. Yes. And I sat down and I pushed play. And about five minutes in, my son, Dad, Dad, I've got this wonderful idea. I'm going to build this out of wood. What do you think? Uh, That's going to be a lot. I don't know if we have the proper things for that. Dad, we can do this. We can do this right now. How about we put it off till tomorrow, you know, when we have more? No, Dad, I really, will you just, I just want to work with you, Dad. I just want to build it with you. Oh, (laughs) pause. (laughs) How do you say no to that? Are you with me? Dad, we're down with a handsaw. We're building a little spinning wheel about what we're going to make a slime. And you spin it, and it comes around and tells you what you're going to put in your slime. And and we're building this out of wood. And it's, yeah, it's good stuff. Learning the handsaw, safety goggles on. Chop the steps a little bit, but they'll be okay. Uh, It was good father-son building. Do you know that the living God from the very beginning has said, I just want to build with you? I just want to build with you. What I'm doing in the garden, come on, Adam and Eve, will you do it with me? What I'm doing in Count's school system, will you do it with me? What I'm doing in the Porter County Jail, Will you come and join me in my work? What an invitation, isn't it? He says, I want you to build my body, which I'm building up. Will you come and join me? So we got asked to do a a fall retreat uh, with some of these young, hip college people like we are. We got asked to do uh, help with a fall retreat for for one of the churches down on campus. and, And so... Uh, I opened my big mouth when we were doing a planning session. It was one, it was my wife and I and another couple, and said, you know, we don't want this to just be information. This is supposed to be connecting with God. It's a retreat. They're getting away from school. Last thing they knew is need just more information. Read this, da-da-da-da-da. Like, like to, to actually connect with God would be great. So let's plan on making sure we have something for every single individual from us to them, God, from God through us to them. God wants to speak. We know God is just like, ready to burst at the seams with things he wants to say to young people who are pursuing him. So let's be conduits of that, eh? right? Let's do this. My idea, trying to pump everybody up for this, and we get down there, and the way it kind of worked, we had our kids with us, some of these things, and I basically find myself in a meeting after meeting with most of these students, most of the time without my wife, without his wife, and it's me and him, and he's being awfully quiet. So there's an awful lot of pressure on me. (laughs) <laughs> right? I said, like, ah! like, this is supposed to be a team effort. Maybe if I only have to do a quarter of the people, like, that would be nice, right? Like, quarter, I can figure that out, you know. I have faith for that. I have faith that God wants to speak something to this group through me. Am I saying, God, I want to be your vessel for speaking life and encouragement? Verses, pictures, what do you have for him, Lord? I'm willing. Speak through me. I'm listening. I'll take steps of faith because I want to build what you're building. I want to encourage them into the fullness of who they're meant to be in you. Just like you guys do every single Sunday when you come to church, right? You're just ready to go because we get to build what God's building with him. Building up the body of Christ. Right? Come on. He's building a church that looks like him, that reflects him, that's going to change history, changing the world forever. And we get to be part of that. That's our destiny. So I've started to ask people, speak into my life. The way I show care in the body of Christ. So if the fivefold 
gifts are meant to actually equip the body of Christ. That means I can grow pastorally in showing care. I can grow evangelistically. I can grow in my teaching. I can grow in my prophetic and apostolic thrust because they're for equipping the body for works of service. That means all of us can grow in those things. I started taking that serious. I asked someone, hey, would you, would you speak into the way I show care? I want, I want to grow in it. I'm not Jesus yet, and I want to build up his body the way he does it. So give me a little, hey, how are you? You might want to consider wonderful opportunity to step into this situation, do these type of things. I had actually the other a couple months ago now on the Skype call, one of the comments in regards to, like, you know, uh, if I could say it this way, I wouldn't do what you did. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and it's not about doing what they did, but listen, I see in part, I know in part, I don't yet carry the care of Christ into the body like I can. I need the body of Christ to help me grow into that. Are you with me? How about you, body of Christ at Cornerstone? Are you blinking arms? I was going to grab Jess, but no thanks. Are you linking arms with people and saying, help me. Help me become more like Christ in regards to this. Because he's building this into something quite special. It's going to transform this community. Porter County is never going to be the same. That school is never going to be the same. We're just scratching the surface. So how do we become more like him? I need people in my life that I'm locking arms with and say, help me hear God like you. Help me speak into the body. Help me build it up like you are building up. Are you with me? What a great gift and joy we have in being able to do that. Amen? Am I preaching an okay sermon? Is this okay to talk about? Do you know we get a build up into that? I don't know if I'm on my notes. Aaron, do you have anything to say? Who who asked? Go ahead. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Rescue me. <sighs> Can she use that one? Sit up here, please. Okay. Yep. Okay. So sorry, I was just over there thinking and more basketball analogies. So I'm really, really sorry if uh, you're tired of basketball, but it's all I got right now. We're in basketball season and this is where we live. So um, where my son who wants to be in the NBA might be vertically challenged. Um, my daughter is not. She's about 5'5 five, five and in the fifth grade. And I love watching her play basketball. And uh, yesterday in their first game, there was a team and they weren't quite as tall as her because she's in fifth grade. So that means she's a lot taller than everyone else. And because she's 5'5", five, five, she's a bit gangly out there. She's all arms and legs. And this first team that they played, they, they got a little physical with her and she got super timid. And even though she was about a head taller than all of them, it kind of it, it kind of took her off guard. And so as a as a embarrassing mom, I'll just be that embarrassing mom. I'm in the stands going like, come on, Kaylin. I'm over there like doing this, like, come on, be strong, you know. And she's out there like, oh, like, come on. Like, what are you doing? And after the game, she, you know, kind of told me, mom, you were embarrassing, you know. And I was like, oh, I just saw what you had out there. Like, honestly, the girl, all she has to do is put her hands up, rebound, and there's no one that can touch her. And so I'm out there like, this this is who you are. This is who you can be, like, if you would just do this. And so the next game, she's out there, and she, I think she had 12 block shots. And she probably had 15 rebounds, and she missed, like, 20 layups. But, you know, whatever. We can't, we can't be – whatever. You know, but it was just so fun to watch her because it was like she was operating in who she could be. There was this ease, and there was this – when she got the ball, if she brings the ball down, you know, people can grab it from her and take it away. But if she just keeps the ball up, like – there's nobody that can touch her. And, you know, so Shane was kind of talking about this walking into our inheritance, you know, and it's like things got a little physical and a little rough and she shrunk back. But when she operated, 
and who she was and the confidence of what she had, it was a whole new ball game, and it was fun to watch. And so I just think sometimes we shrink back, and we don't realize what God's put in us because it's him at work in us. You know, it's not us. It's him at work. And so when we, when we let him work and we yield to that, oh, it's, a, it's fun. It's fun to watch, and it's a thing of beauty. So. Stay up here. <laughs> hey, listen. Have you opened yourself up enough to people that say, that will that they will not let you settle? Say, I'm not going to let you bear your gift, Randy Parks. Doris, you've affected way too many people for way too many decades. God's not done yet. Listen, we have this wonderful way of a body around us that we get to link arms in a way that says. Help us build up to grab a hold of all that God has for us in building what he's building in the world through his body. Are you with me? That'll make you get up early on a Sunday morning and say, wow, I wonder who today. I wonder how this week I can connect with Dennis in a way where we're going to be men of God that build up the body of Christ like we've never seen. Walking into our destiny, nothing's going to stop us. Are you with me? That's what a wonderful gift of discipleship we have so that we can build what God's building. And lastly, you know that our destiny is also to be an evangelist like Jesus? You love that word evangelist, don't you? He was actually quite a remarkable evangelist. He's phenomenal the way he wooed people towards the Father. I'm convinced that if Jesus lived on my street, about half my street would be set free following him already. So that means as one where he's given me a promise that I get to be conformed to his image. I want to learn from him. I want to learn to open people's eyes to the Father the same way he does. I want to pursue people the way he pursued me and never stopped. Even though I was a giant turd, he never stopped. He never gave up on me. Are you with me? That's the type of father he was and is. And the way he's handled me as I was said, no, thank you, Jesus. We get to be like that. It's our destiny to walk with the world the way he's walked with us. Isn't that good news? Uh, so I had, you know, we're, we're trying to learn this on a regular basis. And uh, I had a, you know, uh, we had a party the other day. We used my wife's 40th birthday as an excuse, even though it had happened like several weeks before. And, um, and so we had a bunch of our neighbors over. And uh, one of the neighbors, or one, yeah, she brought her boyfriend along, who is a retired professor, so he's a smart guy. And, and uh, he kind of pinned me at one point in time. Hey, I've been wanting to talk to you. I've been reading a book on mythology and was just kind of curious how much of the Bible you think is mythology. It's like, just, just curious, just kind of, you know, a little party talk, you know. And, hmm, hmm. <laughs> okay. You can either respond... Or somehow I can draw this man. I want to draw him. Jesus, teach me to draw him to you. I want to give him an answer. I want to somehow lead him to the presence of God. How do I spark his heart in a way that actually he wants to open the book, whatever he thinks about it, because he thinks he might encounter the living God? You and I get to learn how to handle people in a way where we draw them into the life of God. shut them down, not just give them an answer, but help walk them into a relationship with the living God. Do you know that we get to be an evangelist like him? Do you know that we get to be sharper and sharper in our representation of Christ to a world who doesn't yet know him and doesn't seem very interested in him? It's our destiny. Can I ask you, who's sharpening you in that? My wife and I, we, we have lots of conversations after this, and, and uh, some of the ones I remember really well of our conversations afterwards is like, I'm really surprised you're not much bolder when it comes to some of those type of things, and they always say they're not religious and none of this stuff. What? She's saying, I'm not bold. What is she talking about? Bold? I'll show you bold. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, those are the things that kind of react right away. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you guys when your wife 
kind of tell, speaks truth and truth. Okay, never mind. Like I said, I'm on a long journey to be more like Jesus, right? I think actually when you kept talking about that, Shane, you were actually shutting her down when I was looking at her. I think she didn't enjoy that conversation. I think she withdrew when you actually kept pushing that. Can you notice that at all? See, we get to sharpen one another and say, how do we draw people into the presence of God? How do we take steps of faith and pray with them when they've just fallen down the stairs? How do we do some of these things and cross boundaries in a way that's going to bring the presence of God right into the midst of our conversation, right into the midst of our meals, right into the midst of chaotic moments in our neighborhood? Because we get to be more like Him. Can I encourage us? we got a group around us that's going to help us be more like Him in regards to the world that doesn't know him yet. I'd say let's approach it in a way that says, I want it. I want the fullness of that. I don't want to just be a nice guy. I want to show the Father and reveal the Father the way Jesus does. We're trying to do this even with our schedule. The way God's pursued us has messed us up. I really did. I didn't want anything to do with Christ for 10 years. He was there every time, the whole time, extending himself into my life. And it's messed me up that he didn't stop pursuing me, even though I was totally indifferent to him. The other day, I had a student. I literally have been chasing him around for a semester. <laughs> Tough work buying coffee for a guy for a semester, and meals, you know, and you can just tell it's kind of like faith thing doesn't go real real deep yet. And, uh, you know, in one of my great moments of trying to be like God evangelistically, I, I got done texting. I thought, you know what? He didn't respond and kind of surface level stuff. I got a lot better things I can do with my time. I said this in my head. It's like the next day or two days later, I get a text from him. Hey, my girlfriend, I didn't even know he had a girl. My girlfriend is like, being tormented spiritually. Can you come help? And it's waking them both up to Christ and that God's real and the spirit world's real and all this stuff. And it's like, just when I speak, <laughs> right? Shane's done. I've had it. I've pursued him for a whole semester. Coffee and meals for a semester. Tough work, Jesus, and he's not interested. What about being like me in this situation and not giving up? Are you with me? We get to grow into that, this wonderful, wonderful destiny that we have inheritance. You'd be like him. All right. Hoo-hoo. All right. And let me just say this. Part one, we get to be discipled into his image. All right? And the next part is I say this. We don't just get to disciple into his image, but we are be discipled into his image, but we also get to help other people in that process. Uh, In Ephesians 2, Paul says this, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Are you with me? God says, I have things for you to do. Matthew 28. Go ahead and go there real quick. I know you guys, I think Josh and Amy took you there last week. But as Jesus is leaving his disciples and going to the Father... He says this in Matthew 28, verse 18, starting with the red letter stuff. All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Therefore, go. As you go is a nice literal translation of that. For in your going, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And if you look at that in the Greek, which some of these really smart Bible people could tell you about, the real verb in that whole thing is to make. As you go, it's taken for granted that you're going to go, that you're going to baptize, that you're going to teach, that you're going to do those things, but your job is to make disciples. It's as if Jesus is saying, as I'm going to continue to do my work in the world, will you come and join me downstairs as I'm building what I'm building? Are you with me? And we get to be part of this process of others becoming more and more and more like him. It's our inheritance. He's saying, 
I want you to join me on this great adventure. Will you come with me? And so I'd like to start off by asking this question in your 2019 plan, your big plan that you've written out and hanging on your fridge of becoming more like Christ. I also want to know, who have you listed on that plan? Some of the people you know that God has said, I want you to invest in these people, and this is how I want you to do it. Are you grabbing a hold of your inheritance in that way? Are you with me? Sometimes discipleship can seem like this big, massive thing. Like, oh, how do I do that? Help Jeff become more like Jesus? That's a big task, God. But so what Andrea does is she breaks it down into segments, okay? <laughs> In your marriage, this is what it looks like to be Christ-centered. In your finances. In your parenting. Are you with me? in your knowing of God in your prayer life, in the way you approach the body of Christ. This is what it looks like to be a man of God. Is this kind of similar to what you said you did? Okay, good. But listen, this is what we get to grab a hold of. God says, I have it for you, body of Christ. Will you come join me in my work? As you go, will you help me disciple the nations into my ways, teaching me to obey, teaching them to obey me, and what I have for them. Are you with me? So listen. Part of what we get to grab a hold of as the body is actually walking people into a greater maturity. Get to walk people into a greater maturity with the living God. That's worth putting a plan together and putting it on the fridge. God, in this season it seems like these three, four people probably in these ways. I want to be faithful with that. I want to join you in the way you're building through discipling sons and daughters who look more like you. Are you with me? That is our inheritance. Yep. I hope you caught what he said. Sometimes discipleship can seem so overwhelming because it's so big and nebulous and we don't really understand what it is. But can you do one thing? Can you take one thing that you know and pass it on? Oh, I can do that. That doesn't seem as overwhelming. When I feel like I have to do the whole thing, I can't do that. But I can take one thing, and I can take that one thing, and I can pass it on and teach and walk alongside someone. Okay. If I can just share this, fun, one of the most fun little things I've gotten to do walking with people in the last little bit was um, through this friends of friends who brought this gal to church and started to befriend her. Um, A a gal has started to come to English Lake uh, last year and started to bring her husband with and her stepson. And um, as God started to work, especially in her life and uh, her stepson, uh, she comes to me and says, can you baptize my stepson? He wants to be baptized. I thought, oh, this is great. And so we started, we got the Jesus storybook Bible for him and, and started to have her go through this Jesus storybook Bible and the story of God with her son, her learning just as much as him, you know, and and trying to walk through what is God's plan and purposes for us as kids and for learning to know him. And and in this process, uh, finally came baptism day, and I stand up to teach Sunday school downstairs before church, and right when I'm getting ready to say the first word, this gal comes in and says, hey, can I talk to you for a moment? And, And pulls me out and ends up being birth mom. And birth mom was not on the same page with me baptizing as stepmom and birth dad were and found out that this was going down today and wanted to have some words with me. And so we started to talk through it. I thought it was resolved. And later I get pulled out in the middle of church. And it wasn't just birth mom, but it was boyfriend and grandma and aunt. And we had a great several hour conversation around the table downstairs where the first time I was cussed out in church and some of those dynamics. And it was one of these things where we're sitting around the table uh, where there's massive amounts of hurt. Years of hurt between these two families and this broken relationship. Son, in absolute tears, broken from the amount of hurt that's going back and forth. And um, I was trying to just crowd control for most of it, to be quite honest. Like, ah, Jesus, help rapture me, something, anything. <laughs> and uh, 
at one point in time, when it felt like nothing I was saying was going anywhere, I said, you know, um, if I could just encourage you guys both, you both have some desire to get for your son to follow Jesus is what's being said. There's all these other things going into your life right now, both sides, and just other factors of hurt. And uh, he said, she said, manipulation, all these things that have gone on for way too long. It makes everything cloudy. But can I encourage you that the greatest way you can encourage your son into Christ is by how you treat one another. This is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done. I'm just crying at the table. and They're looking at me like, who is this weirdo? Why are we sitting around the table? Why would we ever let him baptize our son? I said, I just want to share a little story. We went to the book of Philemon. I shared a story about a slave who had taken advantage of a slave owner and run off. He was worthy of death. And Paul's encouragement to not just forgive him, but have him back as a brother. I said, I think it's too much to be able to just coexist. I think God has something greater for you as a family. The greatest way you can show your son what it looks like to go through the waters of baptism is to try to embrace this as well right now. The birth dad says, everybody out right now. So me and birth mom and son sat down and says, we want this. We want this. Whatever it takes for that to happen. So I started to get to walk through both sides of the family in this difficult situation with all these hurts towards baptism. Day of baptism comes. We actually get to not only just baptize son, but birth mom at the same time. Birth dad and stepmom didn't leave, even though it was hard for them not to. They stayed, tears streaming down their face. Before they left, they took first son in their arms and took him around to all the family members. Gave him a hug. This family, I love it. I get to worship and have communion with them as they're still trying to walk and navigate these hearts. To hurt, but learning to what it means to embrace Jesus in the midst of their walk, to forgive. It's been one of the greatest joys I've had. I got to marry stepmom and birth dad, the most attentive wedding I've ever been at, and we were probably only three sober people there. It was awesome. She goes, I don't know how this wedding thing works, but if we could like tie a knot up there in the middle of our wedding where Jesus is the absolute center of it, the center of what we're doing, could we do something like that? Maybe you could t- say that verse and talk about that verse because we want God to be the center of our marriage. Would that be okay? Yeah, I think it would. In fact, if you want to write my sermon for me before I marry you, that'd be great. Listen, I'm having a blast. And it's hard. And in the midst of it, I had to go to boyfriend because I snapped at him in one of those big episodes when everybody was cussing me out. I kind of was short with him and said, I don't know, at one point in time because everybody was screaming at me in my face and all this stuff. And After I got done baptized, I felt God say, go and apologize. Show him what it looks like to ask for forgiveness. So I walk over to him and say, I need to apologize for the way I talk to you. He's like, oh, man, I know it was, whoo, don't worry about it. I said, no, it was wrong. God doesn't treat us that way, and I need to say I'm sorry. Because everything he could do not to break down. That man is so warm to me right now. Listen, we're getting to teach them how to listen to the voice of God, to read their Bible and encounter God. That's who we get to be as the body of Christ. Can I encourage us? Let's walk into our destiny cornerstone. Let's not say, ah, pretty sweet that we get access, right? To the wallet of God. I'll take it. I want to work with you in the world. I want to see men and women discipled. 
I want to be part of building what you're building. I want a relationship like Jesus has with you. I want to build up the body of Christ the way you're building the body of Christ. I want to walk with the world who doesn't yet know him in the way that you walk. I'll even go say sorry if I need to. Lord, I want to be like you and join you in your work. But he talked about a strategic plan, and and really, if you look at this, that's a pretty good start. What do you say? That's a pretty good start of a strategic plan of, again, being more like Jesus. And I want to encourage us, uh, you know what? This As We Go series, I am so excited about because of this kind of thing. It, in, in this whole series is trying to is trying to really encourage us more into Jesus, but being more like Jesus. And so I want to thank Shane and Aaron for that. Give them a hand. Just thank you for that. And it's it's good to have. I mean, it's 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 exciting to have to be family and so on. And uh, I appreciate them sharing from their heart this morning. So uh, let's stand as we close, shall we? Next week, uh, Don and Gail Atkinson will be here. I'm look. I'm sure you need to look forward to that. Um, it's going to be good. Um, so let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you that, Lord God, you could do all this, quote, on your own. You don't, quote, need us, but you want us. You want us to be participants. You want us to be your hands and feet. Lord, you want us to look like you as we represent you to those around us. Lord, I just confess I've got a long way to go. It's sure as well as all of us would have to say here today. But Lord, as we go, I pray that each step, each day, we would truly become more in your image. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.